So I guess the first question, are you a Republican? Let me answer it uh, this way, if I may, Bob. Uh, Rush will not get his wish. And Mr. Cheney was misinformed. I am still a Republican. And I'd like to point out that in the course of my 50 years of voting for presidents, I have voted for the person I thought was best qualified at that time to lead the nation. Last year, I thought it was President, uh, now Barack Obama. For the previous 20 years, I voted solidly for Republican candidates. Voted for Ronald Reagan twice, George Bush 41 twice, George Bush 43 twice. I spent eight years in Bush administrations. I served Ronald Reagan for two years. I spoke at the 1996 convention and I spoke at the 2000 convention. What the concern about me is that, well, is he too moderate? I have always felt that the Republican Party should be more inclusive than it generally has been over the years. And I believe we need a strong Republican Party that is not just anchored in the base, but has built on the base to include more individuals. And if we don't do that, if we don't reach out more, the party is going to be sitting on a very, very narrow base. And you can only do two things with a base. You can sit on it and watch the world go by, or you can build on the base. And I believe we should build on the base because the nation needs two parties, two parties debating each other. But what we have to do is debate and uh, define who we are and what we are and not just listen to diktats that come down from the right wing of the party. Well, well why do you think uh, the former vice president uh, said what he said? Well, I assume that was his point of view, but uh, he was misled if he thought I left the party. You know, neither he nor Rush Limbaugh are members of the uh, membership committee of the Republican Party. Uh, I get to make my decision on that. And so uh, uh, I will continue to work in a way that I think is helpful to the country and helpful to the party. And there are good reasons for this. I mean, in the military, we have something called after action reviews. After a battle or after a training exercise, you bring all the leaders in and you say, what's going right, what's going wrong, what do we do right or wrong, and how do we move forward? It's a no holes bar, candid discussion of where we are. That's what the Republican Party needs now. When you look at the results of the election last year, lost the presidency by 10 million votes, lost that, that campaign by 10 million votes. We saw both houses of Congress switch to the Democrats. We saw whole sections of the country move to the Democratic column. Virginia, my state, Democratic. Florida, Nevada, other places. We looked at all of the demo demographics of it. Gallup poll had uh, a series of, uh, of indicators, and in almost every demographic indicator, the Republican Party is losing. North, south, east, west, uh, men, women, whites, blacks, Hispanics. And I think the Republican Party has to take a hard look at itself and decide what kind of party are we. Are we simply moving further to the right and by so doing opening up the right of center and the center to be taken over by independents and to be taken over by Democrats. You look at the statistic in Pennsylvania that Arlen Specter has cited, 200,000 Republicans in Pennsylvania switched their allegiance to become Democrats in the election of 2008. That kind of, uh, of leakage cannot continue if the Republican Party is going to play a major role in the life of our country. And if you look at the other statistic that is around these days and that the number of people identifying themselves as Republicans has dropped significantly into the low 20s. And among those low 20s, they're not all conservatives. A lot of them are fairly moderate or right of center Republicans who are concerned about the right wing. And uh, they're not that vocal about it because if you are vocal, you're going to get your voicemail filled up and you're going to get lots of emails like I do. <clears throat> well, what about uh, Rush Limbaugh? A lot of people uh, who are Republicans say, hey, uh, people are taking him too seriously. He is just an entertainer. But he has been on your case for quite a while. When you announced you were voting for Barack Obama, he said the only reason he's doing that is because Barack Obama is black. Was he calling you a racist? I don't know what he was uh, doing by that. And I don't want to exchange insults with him. But I thought it was unfortunate. I laid out a very specific set of reasons as to why I was voting for Barack Obama. Mr. Limbaugh saw fit to dismiss all of those reasons and put it into a racial context. That the only reason I did it is that I was black and I had never voted for a Democrat before. Well, yes, I have. I voted for John Kennedy. I voted for Lyndon Johnson. I even voted for Jimmy Carter. And I've always tried to vote for the best man. But he put it in that racial context and I thought that that was, that was very unfortunate. 
What about the 69 million people who voted for Barack Obama? Did they all do it on the basis of writers? Why doesn't he sort of comment on those? But Mr. Limbaugh is entitled to his opinion, and I don't say he shouldn't have an opinion. The nature of our country is we ought to debate these things. But he shouldn't have a veto over what someone thinks. And he's an entertainer. He is a radio, a radio figure, and he is a significant one. But he's more than that. When the chairman of the RNC, Michael Steele, issues the mildest of criticisms concerning Mr. Limbaugh, and then 24 hours later, the chairman of the RNC has to lay prostrate on the floor, apologizing for it. And when two congressmen offer the mildest criticism of Mr. Limbaugh, they too, within 24 hours, have such pressure brought to bear on them that they have to change their view and apologize for criticizing him. Well, if he's out there, he should be subject to criticism, just as I am subject to criticism. Let's debate the future of the party, and let's let all segments of the party come in. You know, my model for the Republican Party is a great man we just lost, a man by the name of Jack Kemp. Jack was as conservative as anybody. We all know Jack. And Jack also was a man who believed in inclusiveness, reaching out to minorities, reaching out to the poor, sharing the wealth which became a bad term last fall, but sharing the wealth of the country, not only with the rich, but with those who are least advantaged in our society. It's that kind of Jack Kemp Republicanism that I like, and I would like to see the party move more in that kind of a direction.